started. Um, this is a photo of myself just outside of this studio a few months ago. I was so delighted to finally take over a vineyard shed and make it into my own studio. So got a little picture of myself in full, full painting gear. And this is myself when I was three. I'm from Western New York in Chautauqua County and was a farm kid. So the landscape has been an imprint on myself since the start. And this is one of my earliest drawings. I think my mother had it label, labeled when I was four. I, I, I love that it, it's very dramatic and, and uh, creative and not a typical house or a sun kind of drawing that I came up with this very dramatic <laughs> way to express myself. And this is myself at my, I was raised Catholic, loosely Catholic. And um, this is my first communion. And I'm, I'm wearing this hand crocheted dress that my Nana made. So there is always with, with both, all of my family, there was always like this, this um, sensibility of craft that we grew up with. Everyone made things, you know, it's kind of a family of makers. And this is part of my grandfather's farm. And we lived next door to my grandfather farm grandfather's farm in this very beautiful rural set, setting. And so this was kind of our playground. We just spent a lot of time outside and all seasons, you know, just playing on that farm. And this is my earliest oil painting. It's my first oil painting, actually. And I was 13 at the time when I painted this. This is a house I grew up in, and it was just, it's a big, large, basic farmhouse and a lot of space inside and a lot of space outside. And this is one of the, the views from the field, the upper field from my parents, our home. So again, kind of this, this imprint of landscape really has been embedded on me from early on. And this is my grandfather. And I wanted to show this picture of my grandfather because he really instilled within me early on a sense of stewardship of the land. You know, he, I, I can remember being with him on a tractor and he was replanting a field with trees. And I was asking him why he did that. And he said, he says, I've, I've farmed this field and it is simply time to give it back to nature and always be careful about that, you know? So he was really, I think, pretty progressive. And again, it, this whole environment really seeped into my way of, of seeing. Um, this is one of my grandfather's farms. And then I, drew this picture of this barn too to kind of emulate the sensibility of it. And this is a picture of my siblings and aunt and cousin. And I, I really love to reuse materials. I, so I found this old book and was able to, to kind of use this as an impromptu sketch pad to recreate things. This picture is a drawing that my Aunt Hattie did um, 
great great aunt Hattie and so I kind of grew up with this this beautiful it was a crayon drawing of Pharaoh's horses and this had a huge huge inspiration for me to become an artist because I would just stand on that sofa and and look at this drawing for hours on end and I would study her signature I just so loved that as a female artist that she so strongly put her signature right there on the front of this drawing and it, it still I just love love that drawing today and this is one of the reasons we ended up moving to Texas. So <laughs> this, this was at the end of our driveway waiting for the school bus. And not too long after that, my father decided it was time to move to a warmer climate. So we moved to Texas and I went to UT Austin on three art scholarships and again I've always loved painting big I just have this thing I just the bigger the better so this is one of my early works I was preparing for an exhibition for my senior BFA program and this is some work to illustrate that you know, part of my training was really to have a good classical background of drawing and painting, really to learn realistic styles to paint, layering, glazing, and the same was for drawing. So I really loved to draw and it was always something that came, came pretty easy, easily to me, but it was reinforced when I went to university. And this is just part of my sketches of, of one of our puppies. I would draw every night. I love drawing the dogs every night. And this is myself um, when I was studying at UT in Austin, my professor recommended I go to a find art school, a summer program up in New York that had a lot of um, very well-known artists that taught classes. And so he wrote myself a recommendation and I did get in. And it was at the Chautauqua Institution of Fine Art, which also happened to be next to where my grandfather's farm was. And it, it was really a wonderful program. And this is myself with the artist Stephen Brown. And he, for years and years, he showed at the Forum Gallery in New York. Just really top-notch artist. Um, in, in school, it was really recommended that either you have a career painting or a career with a, or you have a family and you don't do both. So I pretty much decided to do both. And here's some inspiration from my porch and some work that came from that. And again, some more glazing techniques and inspiration from where I was coming from. These are my two older kids that I've brought to every opening in New Orleans, I believe. And here's um, this beautiful opening with, with Angela and some work where I really employed this technique of glazing, this very, very highly layered technique. Um, but it was a beautiful show. And my work was really starting to evolve a little bit. And I want to start experimenting with pigments and different ways to paint. I think it's really to keep yourself fresh as, as an artist. You have to keep pushing and pushing and challenging yourself. And so my work was starting to merge into different ways to express the landscape. And here again, the background is becoming, it's like looking past the leaves, beyond the leaves into a whole different layer, more atmosphere to the backgrounds, to the landscape. 
I was um, accepted into the VCCA and studied to where at Virginia Center for Creative Art, a artist residency program in Virginia. And so I decided to go there for a few, few weeks and really examine my studio and my painting. And Angela showed the outcome from my process at the um, residency program. It was really, really, um, it was an expansion of my, my studio process. And this is myself working outside because I, I just love to paint outside. And here is some work that, again, the, the band of light through here, I was really mimicking the band of light through the landscape. And again, these paintings, you know, working, working through the images of the landscape and with crops, I started to embed the netting from my vineyard into the surface of some of my paintings. And Shadow Tackle is based on Robert McFarlane's um, book. And so Shadow Tackle means the light coming through the hitting the forest floor and hitting the bottom of the forest. It was the shifting net-like pattern of shadow formed on a woodland floor by the light filtering action of the canopy and wind. And so again, my relationship with the atmosphere of the landscape, you know, just kept deepening and expanding. And, you know, again, looking, looking out to the horizon of a seascape, you know, just really taking the inspiration from everything around me. And the, the calling here, this refers to listening to birds as I'm painting outside of my studio. And the, the Magwitching Hour, which is another Landmarks um, painting, is for dusk on the Kent marshes, especially when mist rises. And wonder here is, you know, again, this is just about the wonder of the bird formations. So you can kind of see some of the arc and shapes that I was working on while I was creating this painting. And I have improvisation painted while listening to some jazz, a jazz musician. And um, Bayou Reflections, I painted this after staying at Angela's Bayou home and I collected leaves from her, her property when I left and then embedded these leaves to the surface, you know, really kind of mimicking the, the feel of that water feel of the bayou, the leaves. And this was simply inspired by the, um, you can see some mountains from my property in these distant mountain views. And here's another one inspired by Angela's Bayou when we were all on the boat on this beautiful, beautiful, bright, bright day. And so this one, I, I took the added step of incorporating gold leaf with gold powder and started to kind of weave them together and then give this, this really um, watery feel to the bottom corner. And here I'm starting to paint with Raphael's pigments and starting to kind of a whole new, new different way of thinking about painting and thinking about my materials. Um, force of nature, uh, this, this is where um, the wind was actually helping me paint while I was moving across. And Roost, this is another Robert McFarlane, which that is for um, turbulent tide rays formed by the meeting of conflicting currents. 
this great view, you know, again, with the experimentation. Um, this skiffy is of a sky foretelling dubious weather. And this is eight, which is the practice of placing quartz stones in moorland streams so that they would sparkle in moonlight, thereby attracting salmon to them in late summer and autumn. Gaelic, the Isle of Lewis. And this is flight pattern, you know, for birds. And ecotone is when two um, biomes meet. And again, that's from Robert McFarlane. So I did three panels of land, air, and water. And then nimbus of light and air. And murmurations, which is behind me now, um, which is the murmurations of flight patterns of starlings as they create their own fluid movements. Also, I brought some pigments to show you all how I make my paints. So this is um, ultramarine blue. And again, one of the pigments that Raphael used. And I start it like, like when I make pasta, I make a well in the middle of the pigment, and then I'll use the walnut oil. And then I use this glass muller to really finely grind. And this, when you use this muller, it gives it a really, this is what smooths out all the pigments. I think everyone should make their own paints. It's so exciting. And I will also add in for drying spike of lavender. And the spike of lavender, um, it's it's at what the old masters used, and it really will help it dry a, a little bit faster. And plus, it adds a great smell to <laughs> to the studio. And also like, if I make up a lot, I will put it in these tubes. So what you just do is you, you will scrape it up, you add all your pigment to the tube, and you squeeze the bottom here, and suddenly you have a tube of paint. I mean, it's, it's so wonderfully easy, and it's more archival, because you don't have all these different additives and fillers to it. It's just pure pigment. It's just a beautiful way that I've started to paint. And if you can add a little bit more oil. You know, this is a panel too that helps describe my process. So I started this because, you know, I'll paint on raw wood and then I'll seal it in with with a glue, you know, um, either rabbit skin glue or celery glue, which is a, a plant-based glue. And then I'll gesso and sand, gesso, and I'll put on a layer of gold paint. Um, and and I do this kind of like a like. Russian icon. It's just part of my process, and I think it adds that depth. And then I'll put in a thin, warm layer, and then a cool layer. This is a very thin layer of blue, and then another thin layer. And I just keep building, building layers. You know, it's it's kind of how Da Vinci worked. Although he was, he would apply layers that would be so thin you couldn't even see that. And then he would slowly build up. It really can be a labor intensive process. Um, but that's, that's it. It's really that easy to make your own paints.